The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. When you see the numbers, saving even one may seem impossible. But when you partner with Jensen Franklin and Connection Partners around the globe, you can make a difference. Become a live speaker today and support the rescue and restoration of women trapped in sex trafficking, as well as help bring the love of Christ to millions around the globe. For your best gift of support this month, request Jensen Franklin's Revival on DVD and discover the refreshing and newness that begins when you have a true hunger for God with inspiring messages from Dr. Mark Rutland, Evangelist Perry Stone, and Jensen Franklin. This series will build your faith and renew your passion for living a Christ-centered life. Experience the power of revival in your life and become a life speaker today. I want to talk to you about permanently inked, permanently inked. That's what I'm preaching about today. If you've got a tattoo, relax. It's not that kind of sermon. <laughs> a lot of people have gotten tattoos and some have wished that they wouldn't have. Somebody said a tattoo is a permanent proof of temporary insanity. <laughs> and um, I want to talk to you about this permanent ink called tattoos that has to do with our spiritual life. And so, you know, I think the strategy of Satan can be summed up in, in, in this approach. He is a master at, at drawing us into sin. And once he draws a person into sin, then he loves to begin to label that person and get that person inwardly to accept the failure, the shame, the condemnation, the guilt. He loves to tattoo it on their brain. He loves to tattoo an image of failure and guilt and shame and all of the things. Once he draws you in and you fall and you mess up, he wants to permanently ink you with that sin and with that failure so that you constantly think of it and live a life of shame and regret. And then you begin to hear that voice inside that says, you are beyond help and you are beyond hope and you're worthless and you're no good and you're, you should be ashamed and you are a failure and you'll never amount to anything. You might as well just give up. You hear that voice on the inside. You see, part of the devil's tactic in our lives is to accuse us and attack us and condemn us over and over and over and over. And he wants to get permanent ink on your brain so that he tattoos your brain, that you see yourself as, as, as a person of shame and failure and a person who has who has messed up and you will never get over it. That is what the scheme of Satan is in all of our lives. And you know, I have been pastoring for many years and I've met people like that. People that Satan had tattooed their mind with an image of themselves, a shame, a failure in their life. And they, they, they accept that, they believe it inwardly, and it sabotages everything outwardly. And it's a matter of time before it shows up on the outside when you believe something and have it tattooed in your mind. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes, as a man thinks, so is he. They feel like they're born losers. And they have an attitude that if anybody is going to fail, I'll fail. If anybody's going to lose, I'll be the loser. If anybody is going to mess up, a great opportunity, it'll be me. Because that's who I am and that's what I do. I was born to lose. I mean, you've got to be pretty tattooed in your brain 
to take drugs over and over and over. Somewhere the enemy has put permanent ink in somebody's thinking that says this is all you're ever going to be. You're never, you don't have any reason to not take these drugs over and over and over because your life is one of a born loser. You've got to be pretty tattooed in your brain to take bottle after bottle, day after day, relationship, sexually, after relationship, after another and another, ending in crash and burn. Something happens in the brain that causes people outwardly to feel that way. But you don't have to be a born loser. He heals minds. He heals hearts. He heals spirits. You don't have to be a loser. In 1886, Walter George broke the world record in running a mile. He ran it in four minutes and 12 and three quarter seconds. Then in 1923, a man broke the record that he had in four minutes and 10 seconds. It took him 36 years to shave off two seconds. For 36 years, Pablo, who broke that record, held the record for 31 years. Nobody could beat it. But in the 1930s, two men were living in Middlesex, England. Both of them were diagnosed in the same hospital by the same doctor to have the same disease. That disease said they would never walk again. They would be confined to a wheelchair the rest of their life. One of the young men accepted what the doctor told him, and he was confined to the wheelchair, and he never walked. The other man did not accept what the doctor told him, and he made this statement. He said, not only will I walk, I will run. It was a long, sad story. Many thousands of attempts to get out of that wheelchair failed, but he kept trying and kept trying and kept trying until amazingly his body unlocked and he began to walk and yes he began to run and history records that on May the 6th 1954 in Oxford England Roger Bannister broke the record for the first time in human history and he ran a mile in less than four minutes he ran it in three minutes 59.4 seconds he broke the four-minute mile, and even though he was told he had a disease that he would never walk or run, he did it and became the fastest man in the world. When Roger Bannister did that, something happened to the other athletes in the world. You see, they had been tattooed in their mind that nobody can run faster than four-minute mile, but when he broke through, then suddenly the psyche of all the sports people began to change. And even though they had a tattooed mind, a permanent ink that said it's impossible, when somebody else did it, then suddenly they began to think it is possible. They were told all of their life for year after year after year, nobody can break the four-minute mile. That tattoo was removed when Roger Bannister did it. And in the next four years, 25 runners broke the four minute mile. And in 1999, a man broke that record with running a mile in three minutes and 43.13 seconds. That's crazy. That shows you the power of getting a new mindset. Now here's the rest of the story, listen carefully. So later the doctor visited the other man in the hospital who had the disease. He examined Roger Bannister and he verified you absolutely had a disease that you should not have been able to walk, not to mention become the fastest man in the world. But you defied what you were told and you did not accept that in your mind and you overcame it. But the other man was examined by the doctor who stayed in the wheelchair and he said these words, I am so sorry you were misdiagnosed. You don't even have the disease. And all of these years, you've been sitting in a wheelchair because somebody put a thought in your mind that you accepted and you have sat here 
in the wheelchair. The other man had it and wouldn't accept it and became the fastest man in the world. I'm saying to you today, don't be overcome by the devil's tattoo on your brain. He'll tell you you can't live for God. He'll tell you you can never be free. He'll tell you you can never be anything. You're a loser, a born loser. He'll tell you your daddy was a drug addict and you're going to be one. And that's all you're good for. And there's nothing beyond. But you have to learn to refuse the devil's tattoo. And understand that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And God knows how to remove the permanent ink that the enemy thinks he's put that image in your mind of who you are. The blood of Jesus Christ turns us from losers to winners. The blood of Jesus Christ turns us from whiners to climbers and overcomers. You don't have to live that way. Romans 12 said, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. And that you not be conformed to this world. Here it is. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. There is something called the renewing of the mind. When the enemy seduces you, pulls you into sin, pulls you into failure, the enemy then tries to permanently ink you with that image, permanently put a tattoo on your brain. This is who you are, and this is all you'll ever be. Now accept it. But there's something called the renewing of the mind that can begin to happen. That's why when you come to church, you're shampooing your thoughts with the Word of God. You're cleansing and renewing your mind. And if you see yourself as, as that person in the wheelchair that can't ever get up, then you'll never get up. But if you get renewed in your mind, like, like I know the Word of God can do, then you don't have to re accept the tattoos on your brain that are sent from the devil. I thought about Moses. His mother said to him over and over, you're not an, Egy you're not an Egyptian. You're not an Egyptian. You're not an Egyptian. You're, they're going to take you into that palace, but you're not an Egyptian. You're not an Egyptian. You may become Pharaoh one day, but you're not an Egyptian. One day he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, and he went and stopped him and slew the Egyptian, ran for his life, and for 40 years he's on the backside of the desert. Who knows all that tried to get tattooed on his brain? I'm sure the devil for 40 years said, you're a failure, you're a loser, it's too late, you're 80 years old, you're too old, God can't use you, you messed up, now accept it. But he spent time talking to a burning bush that was on fire but was not consumed. And while he was talking to that bush, his, his, God started erasing his tattoo on his brain and renewing his mind. And God said, you are my deliverer. You go tell Pharaoh the great I am that I am said, let my people go. And I'm talking to some people that the enemy's told you you're too old or it's too much that's happened and God can't use you, but God's got good stuff coming your way if you will refuse those devil mind tattoos. The prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 ran out of money, and when he ran out of money, the famine came. When someone leaves God, it's just a matter of time before the famine comes. And I want you to listen how the enemy tattooed that boy's brain. Now he's a hog slopper. Now he's eating out of the pig trough. And the Bible said he had a thought. He came to himself and he said, Father, Daddy, I've sinned against you. I'm not fit to be called your son. So just let me be like your servants. See how the enemy had tattooed his mind. You're less than. You're a born loser. You're not even worthy to be in the family, you filthy, sorry thing. <laughs> That's how the enemy tattooed his mind. And here he comes home in the filth. And when his father saw him, he took off running. 
and he has the best robe and he covers him and he has the best shoes and he puts them on his old muddy toes and he has the best ring and he slides it over the slop on his hands and he says, oh my son, I want you to be fully restored to the family business because God, I've been waiting on this day. I've been longing on this day. And what he's saying is, don't you let the devil tattoo your mind and make you feel like you're less than a full-blown child of the living God. You're not just a servant. You're not just somebody who's, he, you are his child and he has completely restored you to his kingdom. This is where I want to get to. The process of removing a tattoo it's called laser removal. Two things are required to remove a tattoo. What happens is when somebody wants to remove a tattoo, a bright laser light goes on to the tattoo. If the skin were lying on the table, it would burn the skin up. But when that laser bright light hits the tattoo on the skin, beneath the skin, that alone would not remove the tattoo. It's not enough. It just burns it on the outside. When it hits the skin, it begins to work with the blood under the skin. It takes the two. It takes the light coming from the outside and the blood coming on the inside. And the blood starts cleansing it from the inside and the light starts cleansing it on the outside. And suddenly the tattoo that was there gets erased by light and by blood. It's the two working together, the blood and the light that burn out the indelible tattoo that, that someone thought was permanently inked. There's only two things that can burn out the permanent ink of a tattoo. <laughs>
true story about a, a bear that was captured as a little cub and raised up in a, in a zoo. And a, like a traveling, not a zoo, but a traveling carnival. And the people were not, they were abusers of animals. This bear became full grown and it lived in a 12 foot cage all of its life. And it would walk 12 feet and turn around and walk back 12 feet and walk all day long from the time it awoke to the time it went to sleep back and forth. It would sway its head in a familiar sway and it would walk back and forth 12 feet forward, 12 feet back, 12 feet forward to the end of that cage and turn around and do it all day as long as it was awake People would come, word began to get out, year after year after year, come watch that crazy bear. And people being cruel as they can be sometimes, they would thump their cigarettes and try to burn the feet of the bear to break its cadence and break that f familiar walk and swaying of the head. Some would even break, and they said broke glass and would throw it in there and try to get him to stop because he had not stopped for years going back and forth, 12 feet forward, 12 feet back. One day a man bought the bear and gave it to a zoo in, in uh, Germany. And they took this animal that had been encaged in a 12-foot cage for decades and they put it into a huge open field with trees and caves and other bears. When they let him out of that cage and the truck pulled off and he's standing out in a huge open field for the first time in his life, no bars are imprisoning him. They said with the press there and cameras live, they watched as that bear stood up, looked around, thought for a moment and then went back into that old familiar sway. His head began to sway back and forth and out in the middle of a huge open field, he took 12 feet forward and 12 feet back. 12 feet forward. There were no bars to keep him, but something had happened. They realized for the first time his bars were not metal. They were mental. And I wonder how many people just do the 12-foot shuffle back and forth back and forth because the enemy has tattooed your mind to believe that this is all you can ever be and you can never be free and you'll always be addicted, you'll always be bound, you can never get free from porn, you can never get free from alcohol, you can never get free from shame, you can never get free from secret immorality, you can never get free from it. But I'm telling you this morning that there is light here and there is blood here that can erase the tattoos on your mind of the shame and the condemnation and the guilt of the past. And boy, I can't wait to give somebody this scripture. He said in Proverbs 16 that through mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Mercy is the blood. Truth is the laser light. And when you put the two together, 
sin gets purged out of you because the blood and the light are the only things that can remove the devil's tattoos off of your brain. And so I say to you today, Philippians 3 and 13, this one thing I do, Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind. What did he have to forget? Are you kidding? He was Saul of Tarsus. He, he held the coats and, and commanded that Stephen, the first martyr of the New Testament, be stoned, and he held the coats. Now he's got to go preach. Now he's got to go to the same families that he made orphans out of their children because he fed their parents to the lions. But he's going to go back and preach and write half the New Testament. So Paul said, "This one, don't you know he had to refuse the tattoos on his mind of guilt and condemnation? And oh God, I'm unworthy and God couldn't use somebody like me. I stoned, I participated in the stoning of Stephen. But Paul says, Philippians 3, 13, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach for that which is before. I'm simply saying to you today that he can renew your mind. He can give you the power to, to, to refuse the devil's tattoos on your brain. And you can walk out of this place saying, I have been cleansed by light and by blood. And the past is over and I am free. Take just a moment and praise God with me if you know I'm preaching the truth. I believe today's message is speaking to you. Do you have tattoos of shame and pain and regret in your life? I want to tell you that the enemy wants to tattoo your brain and make you live in the shame and the past and the hurt of yesterday. But I'm so glad that Jesus can permanently erase all of Satan's tattoos on your mind and on your thinking and you can have a personal relationship with Him today. I want to invite you to receive this great Savior. You see, the Bible said the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It can purge and cleanse and just get out those cobwebs from your mind. And not just that, the blood of Jesus kills the spider. The power of the enemy to hold you captive by a thought and by shame and regret and pain in your life. You can be free today. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. I give you my life. Wash me and cleanse me in your precious blood. I'm ready to surrender my life to you for your cause, for your purpose. And I thank you for a new life starting today. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I really believe that when you pray in faith and believe that Jesus Christ hears your prayer. And I want to encourage you today to let us know what's happening in your life. Tell somebody. Call your mother, your father, a friend. Tell them what has happened. And then continue in this new walk with Jesus Christ. I want to say in closing, thank you to all of you who have been praying for us as we have had a very busy summer around here. We've just come out of forward East Coast and West Coast, thousands and thousands of students that we got to minister to face to face. It has been amazing. The altars were filled. Young students and lives were changed for eternity. We had hundreds and hundreds of them come forward to give their heart to Christ because of you because of your support of this ministry, because of the way that you stand with us. We're able to take the resources and change lives and minister to hurting people and reach a new generation. And I also want to say a very special thank you to those of you who've joined us this summer in rescuing and restoring the lives of women trapped in human sex trafficking. You know, we, we are partnering with some great and strategic ministries and seeing life change on a daily basis. Every month we're able to partner with people at the Dream Center in California and other great ministries that we've told you about. And we're seeing literally your support become the life speaker into just terrible situations that the only hope is Jesus. If you haven't responded, please pray about going online. See how you can be a part of helping us. We can't do everything, but we can do something. Thank you for watching. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Kingdom Connection.
When you see the numbers, saving even one may seem impossible. But when you partner with Jensen Franklin and Connection Partners around the globe, you can make a difference. Become a live speaker today and support the rescue and restoration of women trapped in sex trafficking, as well as help bring the love of Christ to millions around the globe. For your best gift of support this month, request Jensen Franklin's Revival on DVD and discover the refreshing and newness that begins when you have a true hunger for God. With inspiring messages from Dr. Mark Rutland, Evangelist Perry Stone, and Jensen Franklin, this series will build your faith and renew your passion for living a Christ-centered life. Experience the power of revival in your life and become a life speaker today.